How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here with the DJI Mavic Air in front of me in its Fly More Combo bag. A couple months ago I did an unboxing of this drone and I promised you guys I would make a guide on how to get started with it for beginners. That's what this video is all about. So let's say we just got our Mavic Air in the mail. We're really excited. And uh, by the way, you can watch an unboxing I did of the Mavic Air, link in the video description. But if we want to make sure that we fly this thing safely and don't crash it immediately, we have a few things we have to do. Once you've taken off all the stickers and the tape that's on the drone and the controller and stuff like that, make sure that you have your drone batteries charging. These do not come fully charged. There's like a 50%, 40% charge on these batteries when you first get them. So you have to make sure that you've got a full charge before we go any further. Here's how the Mavic Air unfolds. First of all, make sure the nose is pointing straight out away from you. Then flip it over and underneath you'll find the two rear legs. Bend those up and out, just like that. This one here, up and out. The front legs move just out, like that. Then these little feet flip up and flip up. There's actually part of the signal antenna in these legs. So if you have them like this, you're actually getting less antenna reception possibly than having them out straight out like that. Then we can take our gimbal clamp, take our fingers and press these two tabs. That folds up just like that and then the whole thing slips out forward. Then we see our camera right there. It's fine if it's loose, that's, that's completely normal. It won't actually start uh, being stable and looking like it's stabilized uh, camera gimbal until we turn it on. It's important to make sure that gimbal clamp is off when you power on the drone because the gimbal on the camera will actually move and sort of calibrate itself when you turn on the drone. When it turns on, you'll also see the props twitch a little bit. That's normal, don't worry. Make sure the props all look good and spin well. No noise, no, no odd bearing sounds. Flip it over and you can see this is the battery. You press the battery button once and you can see how much charge you have. This is probably the amount of charge you have when you first get the drone, when they ship to you, uh, which is roughly 50%. It, if it was actually full, it would have all four lights lit, but we only have two with a third one blinking. We're gonna have to charge this. The way the battery is removed from the drone is uh, a tab on this side and a tab on that side. Basically you pinch, press down, pull up. There you go. By the way, this is also where I keep my FAA certification number. Um, since these are above the 0.55 pound FAA limit requirement for registering with the FAA, if you are in the United States and you want to comply with the FAA, you've got to affix your FAA certification number uh, somewhere on or inside the drone that's accessible without tools. If you bought the drone by itself, you'll get one battery. If you bought the Flymore Combo, you'll get three batteries. And you'll also get a charging hub if you have the three battery combo. If you bought just the Mavic Air, this is the charger it comes with, which charges the one battery here and also micro USB for the controller. You'll see though that they give you an adapter. This is actually a USB-C core that they give you and they give you an adapter to plug on top of that which then plugs right into your controller on the side. This USB-C cable can also be used directly on the drone and connect to your computer for reading the SD card that's inside or something like that. But you need to use this adapter if you want to charge the controller with that cable. If you have the one battery option, you can connect it just with this cable right here and it connects real easy. Then you can plug the charger directly into the wall and you can be charging your remote and your batteries at the same time. If you got the charger hub, it opens up just like that and you can plug in up to four batteries at once. However, it only charges one battery at a time. So it's going to find the battery with the most amount of charge and charge that one first so that you'll have a 100% battery the quickest. Then it'll charge the next highest charged battery, then the next, then the next, until they're all 100%. So they connect just like that. Very easy. That same charger lead right there goes right into the bottom of the charging hub. 
While these are charging, you can be reading the manual, you can be further unboxing the drone. What I also suggest you do right now is download the DJI Go 4 app onto your display device of choice. If you're using a tablet or if you're using a cell phone, I'm using an iPhone 7 Plus, and I have the DJI Go 4 app already ready, updated, ready to go. Now, a big reason why we want to charge these batteries now is that otherwise we would be going outside with a 50% battery charge, not really that great and kind of disappointing. And also that will limit us in our next step, which is going to be updating the firmware of the drone. Making sure the firmware is updated on the drone and also the remote control if necessary will ensure that all the bugs and all the fixes that DJI has come across will be addressed and updated in our drone and it'll fly as good as it possibly can. Normally with my iPhone, I use a leather case here, but since that is a little too thick, I'm using a thinner case. This is almost a paper thin case for the iPhone 7. Check the link in the video description to something like this. It fits much better into the controller when we get to that point. So at this point, our controller is now fully charged and so is one of our batteries. We're gonna unplug our controller. Let's take the remote and open up the two arms. You see inside we have our thumbsticks. Screw them right into the thumbstick gimbals. Flip out our antenna and then flip them up. The best way for antennas on a remote control like this are to be pointed straight up because the strongest signal is going to be perpendicular from the length of the antenna. So if we're going to be flying in front of us, then this is the best option. If we're flying behind us, and maybe this is the best option if the drone is back here. Since I have an iPhone, I am going to use this cable, the small one that they give us. This is the micro USB to lightning cable that affixes inside and actually was shipped this way when I first unboxed the controller. Get the phone inside of the two arms. The iPhone 7 Plus is a bit of a big phone, but that's fine. And then make sure that we have our lightning cable nice and snug there inside. Here's the power button on the remote. Press it once and then again and hold it. And you should hear a little chime and now it's on. Your, your phone might do something. Uh, right now my phone is not charging from it, but make sure your phone is not charging from the controller. You're gonna start draining batteries. And someone's texting me. Now let's power on the Mavic Air. Flip it over and there's our little battery power button, which we were originally using to see how much battery life we had left in our battery. Now we press it once and then again and hold it, just like the remote. Flip this bat back over and put it on a flat surface. So you heard the chime. You'll see in the back we have a yellow blinking light. Our remote just turned green, which means that we are good to go with our connection from the remote to the drone. And now we have a, a blinking light that's not blinking so quickly. Our lights on the front are on and our gimbal is now acting properly, see? We just heard a fan kick on. There is an internal fan which keeps this nice and cool if it's working too hard. So that is a cooling fan, good to hear. Now let's open up our DJI Go 4. Addy mode. It just said Addy mode, which means that it's not in GPS mode, which means it's not connected to GPS satellites. That's, that makes sense because we're indoors. Um, you'll also see in the app that a new firmware update is available. Also, if this is the first time you've used a DJI product, it might have you sign in with your DJI account. When you purchase the drone, you might have got done it on the DJI store. If not, you'll have to create an account and then you can log in, uh, choose a few specifications, and then at that point, you should be in. It might also have you do the DJI knowledge quiz. And I do have a video on that. It was actually part of a live stream I did recently. It's a nine question quiz that will go through some of the FAA guidelines if you're in the United States. If you're not in the United States, um, you might not have that quiz. So good for you. <laughs> so here it says new firmware update is available. We want to update for sure. We want to make sure that all these fixes are going to be taken advantage of with our new drone. It also gives us the warning to ensure that the aircraft's battery level is greater than 50% and to not turn off the aircraft or DJI Go 4 during the update. So that's the whole point of charging up a battery and doing this all indoors before we go out to fly. So it's asking us to please manually restart the aircraft. We hit OK and we're going to 
restart this thing by pressing once and then again and hold it and then once again and hold it and we're powering it back on reboot process very easy it's also at this point in time that you want to make sure your micro SD card is installed in the back of the drone if it didn't come with a micro SD card you're gonna to have to get one if you want to record footage however there is eight gigabytes of storage inside of this drone so now we could technically fly but let's go through a few more options in the app before we get out to the field we're going to go hit start flight at the bottom and up comes a rough image of what we're seeing here now on the top left it's saying compass error move the aircraft or calibrate the compass I am on a desk that has metal on it or in it and so this is not going to have good compass calibration we're, we're not going to do it here all right let's do a few things in the app to uh, make sure that when we go out to the field we are absolutely ready to fly on the top row you'll see a couple different icons as well as three little dots let's go to the first icon in the center at the top it looks like a little quadcopter icon we'll press that and those are the main controller settings we're going to scroll down and make sure our multiple flight modes are enabled uh, positioning and sport mode are two modes that we can set this thing in that'll do different things return to home altitude originally I think it's set at 30 meters but we're going to set it a little higher especially if there's stuff around us that's higher than 30 meters or roughly 95 feet return to home is actually a function you can press uh, this button on the remote it's the return to home function at that moment the drone will rise up to your predetermined height and we'll make a beeline for home which is where it took off from that's the home spot where it determines home is uh, so if there's stuff that's blocking the way that's higher than your uh, return to home altitude it might end up hitting it or having some issues getting around it so make sure your return to home altitude is higher than anything around you at any point in time moving further down we're not going to be in beginner mode uh, we will set max flight altitude to 120 meters that is about 400 feet and that is in the United States what the FAA limits us to fly at so we cannot fly higher than 400 feet or 120 meters here we're not going to enable max distance we are going to go to advanced settings now here are some controller sensitivity settings and stuff we're not going to go through that but we are going to go down to sensors click sensors and this is where we can calibrate our compass and our IMU again we can't do the compass indoors but we can do the IMU indoors as long as we have some flat and level surface like this desk press calibrate IMU at the bottom and follow the instructions basically uh, it shows that the props are off but in my experience you don't really need to take the props off the drone to perform a, an IMU calibration hit start and it's going to calibrate the drone in various positions right now just level up and down flat now it's asking for us to turn the drone on its right side because we have our landing gear out we can actually set it on its side and it's going to stay there you just have to be careful make sure that you found that balance point now the left side and each time it successfully calibrates that particular position the green light will start blinking quickly now on its front end now on its back end and now upside down IMU calibration complete restart aircraft we hit restart and it'll uh, restart automatically which is really nice at this point there are a few more things we should go through to make sure that when we go out to fly we are safe and prepared let's go back up to that quadcopter icon at the top and on the left second from the top we will see a little sensors icon press that and make sure all these visual navigation sensors are on you can turn them off later on if you find you don't need them or want them but for now let's make sure our sensors are all on don't forget advanced settings at the bottom now on the left you can see a little controller icon third from the top you can calibrate the remote controller if there's an issue but we're going to go down to stick mode and we are using stick mode 2. stick mode 2 is when the throttle is on the left 
And then button customization. You can customize the buttons. That there's two function buttons that can be customized. Uh, I use the function button to be advanced camera settings and the C button, uh, which is your little index finger button on the remote controller, to be gimbal recenter. On the left, dropping down, the next icon is Wi-Fi settings. We're not going to do much with that one, but we are going to go down to battery settings. And we're going to change our low battery warning to 20. Now, that is a personal preference. I just don't want this thing to start beeping at me incessantly at 30%. I'd rather drop that down. Uh, however, if you really do think that you need a 30% battery warning, go for it. Just know that it'll start beeping at you. Drop down to gimbal settings. And here we can select a couple different things. Gimbal mode, more than likely you want to have as follow. FPV uh, will actually take away some of the roll stabilization of the camera gimbal and kind of give it more of a uh, FPV, you know, or jet fighter sort of feel to the image, whereas follow is going to stabilize it on all three axes, or axes I should say, and then you can turn the drone and it's going to uh, stabilize that, that roll. We won't go through the advanced gimbal settings, but we are going to do an auto gimbal calibration there at the bottom. And just let it go through its gimbal calibration process. Um, again, this is probably all already done in the factory, but we want to make sure that we've done it and everything is good to go with our quadcopter before we fly it. All right, gimbal calibrated. Good news. Now let's go all the way to the right. You see three dots. Click the little dot, dot, dot icon. And now it says general settings. Here you can select your measurement units from either imperial or metric, up to you. I'll select imperial and then going down, going down, we see video cache, cache during video shooting. I turn that off. I personally don't want to have my photos and videos that I take with the drone to be on my, my phone as well. A, it takes up space on my phone and B, I also have a sneaky suspicion that video cache with your phone will also slow down the DJI GO 4 app, which sometimes needs all the help it can get. So I turn off video cache and I only have my footage and pictures on the SD card or the internal storage in the drone itself. So these two batteries are almost done charging. I'm going to power off the drone by pressing the battery once and then again and holding it. Put the gimbal clamp back on and take out that battery which feels a little bit warm, so we're gonna let it cool down a second and then put it on our battery hub, then make sure all three of our batteries are 100%, as well as the controller, and uh, then we're gonna head out to the field. So this has been part one of setting up the Mavic Air. Go on to the next video, part two, setting up the Mavic Air, where we actually get off the ground with this thing and, and take our first flights. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and until next time, happy flying.